Hello viewers, Super GT here. Gran Turismo 7 has been out for seven months now and in this video I wanted to explore a couple of the key issues that I've been finding with the game, particularly talking about two main problems it has with the multiplayer. Whilst taking a look at some online gameplay here around Laguna Seca, this is a group three race, uh, daily race C of this week. Now, I think it's fair to say that Gran Turismo 7 has had a fairly rocky road from it's released back in March compared to now. It's gone up and down, it's improved, it's got worse. It's, it's been really quite a strange experience. But I wanted to focus on two key things in this video as it uh, looks like we're going to get overtaken here into this next corner with the Porsche, who's then going to go actually wide. We're going to go back past him. Now, the first issue actually relates to that car that we just got passed by, which is the Porsche, and the fact that multiplayer tends to be massively dominated by one or two cars in every category and at the moment the Porsche 911 is the dominant group 3 car and it's the car you're going to see a lot of as uh, someone gets vaporized to the shadow realm in the rear view mirror you might notice I'm using the uh, different viewpoint here from the front of the car and I felt like changing it I felt like the sound quality is actually better in this view plus you get the rear view mirror and you can't get the rear view mirror in the hood cam. So I felt like changing this just for, you know, an experiment just to see if this works. Now this Porsche is going to go way too deep into this turn and sideswipe uh, the Nissan GTR. So it's actually interesting to see a couple of cars on uh, on show here. I've gone for the BMW M6. So I wanted to try and see if I could beat the Porsche, the, the dominant Group 3 car uh, around Laguna Seca. And that is the main... Uh, well, the first issue that I wanted to speak about, really. And to be honest, you know, I, I would put my hands up and say that I am often the one using the most dominant car. Um, but that tends to be the case for a lot of people. Um, in some ways, it's not such a bad thing when everyone's using the same car because it means that you're going to get a, an, an equal race and, you know, everyone's got the same machinery. So there's no excuses for being beaten in that sense. But I think it's, it's a shame, really, especially in Group 3, when you've got a good 20, 25 or more, maybe 30 different cars that, you know, are on offer to be used. But the BOP, the balance of performance, just isn't strong enough. It isn't good enough at the moment. And that results in just one or two cars just being completely dominant over the rest. And this is something that I, I feel has definitely got worse in... Gran Turismo 7 compared to Gran Turismo Sport. Gran Turismo Sport, it still had the same issue to an extent, but I feel like it's, it's worse in this game for sure. So BOP, an improvement on that would be great to see. It would be really good to see a, a, a bigger range of cars where you can actually compete for the win, because at the moment I would say this BMW is a good at least half a second off compared to the Porsche around this track. And here's the thing. This is only one track, and yes, you know, maybe this car just isn't suited to this track. But on the whole, the Porsche is very strong everywhere at the moment. And it's very hard to beat it in, in many scenarios. Now, I'm under attack here. Let's recap this race so far. I'm up into third, actually, fourth temporarily there. I'm up into third from sixth place. I'm on the hard tyre. In this race, you have to use the hard tyre and the medium tyre. And then this Porsche is going up the inside, and... I was waiting for them to turn in and go a bit quicker, but eventually they go through. That's fine. And I knew that a couple of these guys would be coming through on the medium. I'm on the hard, so I should be slower at this point. And I didn't really have a problem with that, so I felt like, okay, let's just, you know, if they're going to go for the move, I'm not going to fight them too much. Not lose too much time to the, the cars up in first and second place. Uh, although first place is a long way ahead at this point. But this guy is unfortunately going to meet his fate and this is his this is his view mere seconds before meeting the american barrier anyway so he gets vaporized into the wall and i'm back in third again and oh, a little bit wide there through the corkscrew down the hill and the tires are just beginning to to die of death this is quite a high tire wear race nine times tire wear although i would say that with the tyre model the way it is at the moment, it's kind of weird because you don't actually... I mean, the tyres don't seem to really get worse. They just 
get very bad once they fall off a cliff completely, but until that point they're kind of the same. Uh, the performance is kind of the same on the first lap that is on the fifth lap. Doesn't really seem to change too much. But at the end of lap seven, I brought the car in and I was followed in by Koke Lopez. He's a world tour level player, very fast player indeed. And he was on the medium, so he was charging fast. And on the pit exit, this was kind of a weird little moment here because I went into the pit lane and I was definitely ahead. But then on the exit, you can see he's actually kind of partially inside my car, which is a bit strange. So I knew that on the exit, I had to drive to the right. So when we came out of the ghost, I would be on the inside and then you wouldn't get a cheeky move because that is sometimes a weird little move you can do on this game when you can ghost through someone and as long as you stick to the inside you could often get the overtake done uh, once you come out of the ghosting phase. Uh, on this occasion I managed to rebuff that attempt and I'm sat here in fourth although, although uh, one of the cars in front I should get ahead once they go for the pit uh, for their pit stop. So the leader goes in, and that's the car I'm directly competing against, really, for second place. And it's kind of a weird pit lane here, because it's actually a short pit lane, really, but it takes actually about 20 seconds to go from the final corner to your pit box, which is way longer than it really would take in reality. That's kind of a weird thing. Um, I will touch upon the second thing I find wrong with the game in a moment, once we've completed this race. Um, but yes, I... I would like to have maybe a bit of a discussion in the comments section about about this topic and how the multiplayer is. Um, it's not always such a bad thing to have one dominant car. As you see here, the Porsche, that's the guy in second. And it's quite an interesting pit lane here at Laguna, whereby you can often see your opponent leaving the pit lane and then he's actually going to exit one second in front. So actually a lot closer. Uh, so the undercuts definitely worked. I was about three seconds behind, I think before the pit stops and now it is just under one second so still with Koke in tow and he has the hard tyres on at the moment and therefore I should really be able to pull away but he's actually doing a very good job let's not forget he is a world tour level player and he has, he has had success at that kind of level so we know that he's very very good like top 10 in the world kind of level it's going to be very difficult to try and beat him into the final corner lap number nine and I felt like this car had a clear disadvantage on the exit the Porsche with I felt better traction really because of its rear engine but also better gearing I would say for this circuit and uh, coming into the final turn the following lap lap number 10 again it, it felt quite hard to get quite close and you see it just pushing a little bit too much and unfortunately that's going to lose me enough momentum such that Koke here is able to pass around the outside and I can't really do anything about that and uh, he's up into third so now all I can do is try to stick as close as possible and potentially go for a return move if not uh, go along with him and try to catch up with second and you know that's the, they're my main two options really at this point but it's quite hard to keep up with the Porsche uh, the Porsche just seems to rotate so well through the turns and uh, Laguna is a fairly twisty circuit and uh, therefore a big clunky machine like the BMW M6 doesn't suit this kind of track so well especially out of the exits of the slow corners like that uh, definitely losing ground there but it was on lap 13 getting towards the end of the race now where you see the guy in second just has a big moment and that corner is so so dangerous and that is case in point as he ends up facing the wall now end of lap 13 you can see the tyres were beginning to really struggle they were screaming in pain and they were dying of death. The leading cause of death for those that aren't aware. So down into turn number two officially. Now you can see this car just did not want to turn left. Courtesy really of my right hand tyres dying. And I had a bit of a gap to the guys behind. It was about 11 seconds by this point. But it's amazing how quickly that kind of time can be eroded when you do not have the tyres underneath you. And coming through turns three and four, that's fine because they're both right handers the left hand is where I'm going to struggle this track has majority left hand you see here going very deep the car is no longer wanting to turn I'm saying please turn left and the car's like no thank you my front right is dead don't fancy it so let's take a look at the time gap you can see just how slow I'm having to go to get around these corners and that gap is coming down drastically quick as we go into the corkscrew 
uh, for the final time. So my tyres are absolutely shot. And all I can do is crawl around and hope that that gap was big enough for me to finish in third place. I think a podium would not be such a bad result. Starting in sixth and we're not in the meta car. We're not in the Porsche trying to trying to take the fight to the Porsche in the BMW. And then into the final turn. The gap comes down below two seconds. I can see them in a the rear view mirror. And through the final corner, I think I've just done enough. There they are. Very close indeed. But thankfully, the remaining tyres hold on. And I'm able to complete the race and finish in third. Albeit 25 seconds off the lead in the end. Now, I improved my qualifying time here. To a 20.895. In time for race number two. And... This one, well, it ended like this. Yes, ending up kissing Barrier. And then the next race was going quite well. And quite hilariously, it ended like this. Pretty much exactly the same. I guess I just want to meet Barry quite a lot, don't I? And putting them side by side is actually quite incredible how consistent I am. And, you know, they do say to be consistent in motorsport, but not really consistently crashing. Try not to do that. But here's the second issue I've been finding with Gran Turismo 7 multiplayer. And that really relates to the strength of the lobbies. And if we take a look at this, we've got A plus uh, S players at the front. They've got AS, AA, BS. And then the other uh, end of the grid, BS and some more AS and BS players. And, you know, that's fine. But what I would say is the strength of depth doesn't seem to be there compared to GT Sport. And, you know, you're always going to get a mix of players to some extent. But in this race, for example, this is the end of lap four. And you see the gap. It's pretty much half a lap between first and last. And a lot of the players in the middle are quite close. But the gap from, you know, so the, the top three to the back three is huge. Uh, so the field spread is massive. I, I think the strength of the depth isn't quite there at the moment. Uh, the player base is quite divided. And the overall amount of players, I don't think, is as high as it is. Could really be so i finished second in that in that last race finished second in this one i just couldn't really make this bmw win i was there was always one player who was slightly quicker and in the portion there's not much i could do um so what i thought i'd do instead is well if you can't beat them join them i was 192nd in the world with the bmw with a 20.5 which i think was a good lap for that car but what I thought I'd do is watch the fastest Porsche time, the 911. Interestingly, there's only one Porsche in the top four at the time of recording, which is quite interesting. But it was definitely the most sought after race car. Most people were choosing it in the race. Now, this car, the reason why it's so quick around here is really just the rotation and the traction. And after watching that replay, I thought, okay, I'm going to join. Uh, the 911 club. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the car and see what I can do. After actually, let's change the tyres to the correct tyres on the mediums. So, at one minute twenty point five eight zero to beat. And the first thing I notice really as I get as I head into the hairpin here is, is just how quickly it turns. It definitely I, I I can already feel that it's going into the corner quicker. It's rotating more, and therefore I can get on the power early on the corner exit. And it got, it was actually quite hard to get used to. You see there, I just turn in too early because of how sharp it is on the front end. It goes in so early that I'm not used to it. So it took a couple of laps to get used to it. You see a 21.3, 21.4, my first couple of laps. So nothing special. But after, you know, just getting used to that feeling of how quickly this car turns, I was able to hook up a better lap here. And we're looking at that delta in the middle of the screen. So a tenth up, nearly a two tenths up into this corner getting a good exit onto this back straight two tenths up you see the ghost in the mirror and that is one of the advantages i think of using this viewpoint instead the fact that you can see uh, the cars behind you and this in this instant it's my own ghost now this is a very tricky corner it requires a lot of commitment and bravery and there's a big risk of running wide on the exit but i've taken that very well and i'm basically six tenths up going into the corkscrew into second gear i've carried quite a lot of speed through there actually that's not such a bad line and this car just seems to glide through these corners so much better than the bmw the bmw really does feel every bit of its size going through this twisty circuit into the final corner 
and we are 8 tenths of a second up compared to the 21.3. So this is going to be a good lap, good exit there, out of the final turn. And it's nearly a second up, it's going to be a 20.415, so we've improved by nearly 2 tenths compared to the best BMW lap. And that's only taken me 4 laps. It's my third lap on this stint, but I did one extra lap before. So that's actually a very quick improvement. And I was able to set a couple of uh, other... 20.4s here and this was a good sign here coming out of this turn the delta was more than a tenth up nearly two tenths going into this turn so i knew that a 0.2 was possible a 20.2 was something i could do i had the sectors for it the splits but then through the second to last corner there just carrying a little bit too much speed raising the inside curb the sausage curb which you kind of really don't want to touch too much you can just kind of graze them a little bit but nothing more than that up to the line this isn't going to be a faster lap but it is a 20.4 again that's three in a row so the consistency is there and i feel like this car is slightly better for consistency it is a little bit nervous i would say in some senses because it is so quick into the turns and you do have to learn to manage that but overall consistency was slightly better in this car compared to the bmw now into this left you see here this uh, the split sector was very good more than three tenths up compared to the 20.4 and here i just went a little bit too hard in and ended up into the gravel so yeah i think that's the problem with the delta you can end up looking at the delta too much chasing the delta and then you push a little bit too hard or you get a bit nervous and then you make a mistake now on this lap at the end of the lap i was actually very comparable to my best lap this is lap 12 of the session now so we're 16 and a half minutes into this session into the final turn pretty much level with my best lap and we're going to get a slightly better exit onto the power slightly earlier than before and it's going to be an improvement by over a tenth of a second to a 20.301 that's good but we still definitely go quicker than that i've had splits for 0.2s and 0.1s so i know that there's more speed in it so here uh, looking at the delta again nearly two tenths up on the 0.3 are we going to make a mistake again? Yes, we are. Oh my goodness. That was like one pixel onto the gravel. And unfortunately, it's going to pull you wide into the wall. And yeah, I thought I'd retry, have a little bit of a break, and then come back. And my first lap in this uh, sector, sorry, in this little session here was a 20.4. So that's a good opening lap. And I'm already three tenths up coming into this turn. Or about two tenths, should I say, really into the penultimate turn a little bit wide that's going to lose me a good tenth or so maybe even two tenths into the final corner this can still be imp an improvement if i get this exit right that's a good exit actually into second gear getting the gears all the way to the line it's going to be a 198 that's the point one i knew i could do a point one but i'm still sensing that there's pace in this car that, that i haven't quite unlocked yet it's actually quite a tricky lap to hook up is laguna seca it's an enjoyable lap it's quite a short one and uh, it's a good challenge a good mix of different corners slow ones very fast ones technical ones as well but i feel as though if i continue for a few more laps then uh, you know that time is being shaved away and i'm getting so sort of every couple of minutes every five minutes or so i'm taking away a tenth therefore i know that if i just carry on uh, we could shave a bit more off on this lap so far pretty much neck and neck with the ghost a lot of commitment there onto the power almost into the gravel but not quite you really do have to commit through that corner to carry the speed up the hill and that's a very big corner in terms of lap time through the corkscrew don't quite nail the apexes as i would like and i lose maybe half a tenth through the second to last corner the third to last corner this is the second to last corner fast right hander with lots of camber to help you round and i'm a tenth up tenth and a half up into the final turn let's see what we can do here get the car rotated don't get the best of exits actually compared to my previous best and as we hit the line it's going to be a 120.1 so that's again a solid improvement but here we go guys this is going to be the lap this is going to be the one okay and after maybe i say half an hour of trying i felt like i was more comfortable with this car really exploring what it can do its capabilities and understanding the track limits of the of the circuit so here we go then the ghost there is the 20.104 i'm going to turn it on and off during the lap 
because it's good to have a reference but sometimes you don't want it visually right in front of you as you're trying to concentrate on a corner but it is good just to turn it off and on so you know where you are compared to it so the corner so far nice and smooth just nice and relaxed as you go in here off the brake let the car coast in then back on the power almost onto the gravel maybe a slight bit onto the gravel it looked like we were faster than the ghost there let's not forget of course the ghost starts in front by a one tenth and therefore if I'm level with it I'm actually faster than it it's in the mirror so I'm, I'm ahead of the ghost so this is good through here commitment bravery on the power right to the edge of the track still ahead of the ghost this is good news up towards the corkscrew no delta to chase at the moment just the references to the ghost taking a lot of the track could have been a little bit more a little bit more of the track through the corkscrew but it's not too bad looking for that late apex onto the power back over to the left to give yourself the better run through this right hander nailing the apex a little bit wide on the exit but it's not going to lose us too much time back to the right and i turn in a little bit early there it's going to cost us on the exit slightly but i am ahead of the ghost and i'm actually pulling away that has been a really good lap it's going to be a 1 minute 19.8 and i knew i could do it i knew i could do a 19 and i knew it would take some commitment and quite a lot of practice here but i managed to do it thankfully and incidentally it put me sixth place on my friends list of course of course that was going to happen and on the leaderboard uh, the global leaderboard i am 40th in the world and with that i'm actually fairly happy i think i could go a little bit quicker if i if i did some more but i think that's a really solid time for just putting in half an hour um so overall very happy with that time but yeah i think that's quite clear that the porsche is the dominant car but let me know your thoughts on the two points that we've covered in this video the fact that we have a dominant car in pretty much every class and also the strength of depth of the online player base at the moment is a little bit low i would say and therefore the races aren't as close as they could be but that brings it close to this one if you haven't seen my previous video it's on the screen right now in the meantime have yourself an amazing day and i'll catch you next time goodbye